Good morning and welcome to our live talk program. This is Lloyd Grover here, your host on Revive Reform Radio, doing our live talk program covering natural health on this year, Wednesday morning, rise and shine. And this morning here, we're looking at the topic, uh, ongoing problems with animal-borne diseases, ongoing problems with animal-borne diseases. So just some talk here and um, three texts that I have, uh, three articles that I have to share with you about what's going on and just this idea here that there's a uh, constant and increased problems with um, on animal born diseases. So welcome again to our live talk program. Hopefully you had a blessed night, right? And um, thanks for joining me here. Let's pray. Our Father, what in heaven, I thank you again for the blessings of your word and the blessings, dear Lord, of knowing thee. May you bless us, dear Father, as we look into these things. And may we always be careful and take all the precautions that's necessary for our health and for our life. This is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. So, just had a slight delay here. I had to reboot my computer. I think it was doing an update and I had to do a quick reboot. And so, because of that, I had to kind of shut everything down at the last moment. So, um, but again, so we're looking at this topic here, the ongoing, the ongoing um, problems that are happening due to food, you know, meat-borne diseases or animal-borne diseases diseases and that's the proper way to say it because some of it that's going on is um it's the contamination that is happening in the um various different um farming systems that we have and this contamination is coming from animals and i think as we've seen all these recalls that are going on it um it is an indication for me that it's not getting better but it's getting worse and that um, I think just the whole idea of the aging of the earth, um, the interaction with various pharmaceutical and all these different things that the animals like the people are getting sicker and we're seeing this constant recall. And so it's important for you to know that and to make your decision as to how you may eat, eat and live and have you been. In Matthew 24, verse 7, Matthew 24, verse 7, it says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine, pestilence, and earthquake in diverse places. Um, in a normal course of life, um, famine, pestilence, more famine, pestilence, because of nation rising against nation, is a sequence of events. War, give blockades, blockades cause famine, famine, um, lack of food causes people to have no nutrients and so the body starts to break down. Our bodies are sustained by the food we eat and the health that we get is primarily from the source of the food we eat. Eat, And so as I was reading here that we eat about a 960 pounds, I think it's in one of my articles, of food a year. So we eat about half a ton of food a year on an average. And so the food we eat is important, but as the food we're eating is one thing where you can't get the food and you have malnutrition. It's another thing where you're getting the food and the food is contaminated and causing sickness. But most of the sickness we can simply trace back to the animal, whether it be the feces of the animal to use to um, as um, I was going to say nutrient for the soil, but I guess that's what the right way to say it, or one of the right way to say it. But nutrient for the soil or eating the animal itself, we find that there's an ongoing problem with animal-borne diseases. And so it's better for us to um, take precaution as much as we possibly can. In Romans 8, verse 22, it says, For we know that the whole creation grown it and travail it in pain together until, until now. And we see that as um, the, 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 the troubles in life increase and men get more corrupt, there's things that men do to animals that cause them to get sick. And then there's things that we do, not purposefully, but it happens, all the different contamination that is in the soil, in the air, affects us, but it affects the animals, I believe, worse because they can't go to a doctor. They can't go on a diet they can't do anything to try to recover themselves and so as they get sicker whatever ways they pass is contaminated and then that contamination is passed through to the um, soil and to the plant and then we end up eating the plant and getting sick so i start off by reading the first article here and this is um taken from over there in nbc news and this was 
uh, on the ongoing problem with lettuce. And I'm sure if you go into your supermarket, you will know that there's a few lettuce that is available. Uh, unless it's probably greenhouse grown, um, I think they're just not uh, stocking uh, most of the lettuce that normally stocked this time of year. So um, this is NBC News, and this is entitled Nine More Sicken in E. coli outbreak affecting romaine lettuce, CDC says. The number sicken in an E. coli outbreak involved romaine lettuce has grown to 52, and I think it's now higher a few days later. So basically, it is it, it, lettuce is not labeled, do not buy, serve the lettuce, eat the lettuce, or sell the lettuce. Uh, nine more people have been sickened in an in an E. coli outbreak affecting Roman lettuce, bringing the total to 52 people across 15 states. The Center for Disease and Control and Prevention said Thursday, New Jersey and California have the most cases, each involving, each having reported 11 people sickened in the outbreak that began as early as October 5th, the CDC says. Um, seven people have been sickened in Michigan, six in New York and New Hampshire. Cases have also been reported in Connecticut, Florida, Illinois, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Maryland, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Wisconsin, according to the CDC. An additional 27 cases are under investigation in Canada, that country's government said. Authorities believe that romaine lettuce from northern to, to central California is likely the source of the outbreak, but no common grower, supplier, just distributor, brand of romaine lettuce has been identified. The public health agencies say that some romaine lettuce is now being labeled with an harvest location and consumers should check for those labels to confirm the vegetable was not harvested in the central coastal growing region of northern and central California. If the romaine lettuce is not labeled, do not buy, serve, sell, or eat, the CDC says. And if consumers don't know if the lettuce is there in their refrigerator is romaine or if a salad mix contains romaine, they should trash it. No deaths have been reported in the outbreak, although 19 people have been hospitalized and two of those develop a type of kidney failure called um, uh, hemolytic uremic syndrome, according to the um, agency. E. coli is normally harmless, but there is a strain called E. coli 0157-H7 that produces a compound called shiga toxin, that can make people very ill, E. coli, um, very ill. E. coli can be spread by contaminated water or animal manure. Another E. coli outbreak also affected romaine lettuce in the spring, killed five people and made more than 200 people sick in, sick in, 30, sick in 37 states. It was eventually traced to contaminated canal water in farming areas area in Yuma, Arizona. The current outbreak is not linked to the outbreak earlier this year. Overall, the CDC estimate that 48 million Americans get sick from a foodborne illness every year. Of that total, 128,000 people are hospitalized and 3,000 die in the article there. So here's our first article here. And if you notice here that there's a strain that was more dangerous earlier in the year that um, sickened 200 people um, that came out and killed five that came out of Yuma, Arizona. Uh, this one here has not killed anybody so far, um, but it has sickened a few people, primarily in New Jersey and California. And it has caused some hospitalized some and two people have developed a type of kidney failure. So this is where, notice here the one in Yuma, Cal um, Yuma, Arizona, that happened earlier this year had come from canal water being contaminated with manure. And so 
and the strains are becoming more dangerous as normally you would just have, I guess, a, a stomach virus and you pass it out, take some peptobismol or charcoal or something, and then you're fine. A few days later, this year is hospitalizing and causing people to be really sick. So this is where now um, when we talk about animal, you know, because often people say, well, what's one of the main reasons why it would be good to stay away from animal? And, and, and the primary reason, it would be the diseases. This is where the primary reason. Uh, the secondary, and could also be the primary reason, is that you can get better nutrients firsthand by eating um, plants, eat what animals eat, you know, cows eat plants, goat eat plants, so forth. So you eat what they eat, you get the nutrients firsthand. It's the same thing. What's better to eat, seaweed or fish? It's better to eat seaweed. You eat what the fish eat, and then you get the nutrients firsthand. Um, somebody said, but not all. Some fishes are carnivore. They eat other fishes. Sure, but the source of the original source of the nutrient they're eating is um, is a seaweed. So you eat the seaweed primarily, and then you get the omegas and so forth. And then you know there's other source for omega fatty acids like. Um, flaxseed and so forth and, and so when you look at that you you see here that um it, it is it is even when the plants get contaminated that the primary source is not even the soil as it is organically but it's the soil that has been um fortified or nourished by manure and the manure many times is not um, kiln baked or naturally processed so to speak through air and sun and dried it is um, the manure that is fresh and if you know uh, most of the time where you have a farming area there will be cattle and they'll take the cattle feces or manure and they'll spread it on the fields fresh and so the plant is in that environment but also because wherever there's cattle there's a lot of time there's water runoffs so the water will run off into the streams and the rivers and canals and then you know the water is used from there to irrigate and to um you know to uh, bring water to the, the farm and so the remain and the wheat which i'm going to cover in a second gets contaminated with the e coli and if the e coli now is a mutated e coli it makes it more dangerous because the body doesn't know how to fight that readily and so it becomes more dangerous to the immune system or to the body so that's part of the problem here and this is why i would say um the ongoing problems with animal born diseases because as we have been covering here i've been covering here is that um drugs doesn't cure the disease it changes form and location and it will give temporary relief but one has to figure out something else because it's coming back and as we see with these various different um, bacteria and viruses and so forth, that they continually, continuously mutating, or they, they they figure out, in other words, they figure out the drugs and figure out how not to be killed by it. And as they figure out not to be killed by it, um, they become more um, aggressive, so to speak. And as they become more aggressive, when they get inside of us, they become more dangerous to us uh and that's a not a, a separate side note and i think i'm gonna have to cover that one day that many scientists they're looking into this thing with these viruses and bacteria that the original concept that science that they claim is all evidence-based um thought about small things they said that the smaller um like the viruses and bacteria they are unintelligent and as things get larger, they get intelligent. So most naturally, they postulated that, or they assumed, based upon their false premise, that um, we who are larger would be, I guess, more intelligent. Uh, that's their idea. Um, but what they found out as time has moved on is that these viruses and bacteria, they, it's almost like they have a brain of their own. And they 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 have intelligence. So anyhow, with that said, now I'm going to move to my second article. So when we look at this, we look at uh, there's a constant mutation going on in the living world. And as 
uh, we poison this is the society or the earth the viruses the bacteria everything mutates but it doesn't mutate to our well-being it mutates to our danger and so that's why this ongoing problem is of an interest because as i said this year um we're seeing so many recalls i mean a lot of recalls there's been so many recalls on so many different food products almost all meats were recalled this year one of the largest recall in many years happened this year 12 pound thousand pounds of beef um pork recall um i, I can't remember if there was any chicken recall but turkey recall so many different even biscuits getting recalled all these different things getting recalled and so lettuce is being recalled and so it's important to note the source the source of the the the, the problem uh, is in the animal and this is why it's important if you can get something that does not grow in any animal manure and doesn't and eat food that doesn't have any animal um, whatever contamination if you can i don't think it's possible but you limit it as much as possible uh next article i'm going to read here this is current this is again from nbc news maggie fox this is entitled the cdc say raw cookie dough may be delicious but dangerous um i it, there's a twist to this article it's see it's cookie season and federal health officials are reminding americans not to eat raw cookie dough tempting um, as it may be uh that's that's really what they say fascinating um there are two reasons raw cookie dough can make you sick according to the center for disease control and prevention one is the raw egg that many recipes call for the other is the flour so this is the twist so they're saying it's not just the egg it's the flour also is contaminated raw eggs carry salmonella bacteria that can cause severe stomach upset and that every year kill kill 450 people in the u.s salmonella makes 1.2 million people sick every year but even egg-free dough isn't safe if it contains raw flour the cdc notes uncooked flour can carry a variety of disease causing germs including e coli an outbreak of e coli traced to raw flour made 63 people sick in 2016 so 63 63 people were sick in 2016 from raw flour right or from flour raw flour so even if you are you've been eating raw cookie dough for years with no apparent ill effects it's time to stop the cdc advice products made with cookie cookie dough such as ice cream have heated have eaten the dough to kill germs do not taste or eat any raw dough or batter whether for cookie tortillas pizza biscuit pancakes or crafts um made with raw flour such as homemade play-doh and holiday ornaments the cdc advice and actually i have to say this here when i read the article first uh, uh when they say crafts i was like you mean like craft beer <laughs> and then i kept on reading and then i realized oh you mean like arts and crafts um that type of craft not witchcraft not not crafts craft beer uh so anyhow that's i guess how my mind's work <laughs> like craft <laughs> but crafts so art and craft so when you're doing any type of thing if it's raw dough you shouldn't um put it in your mouth and chew it uh do not let children play with or eat raw dough including dough for crafts so that means they can't use the dough for crafts then handling food including flour requires care and hygiene keep raw food such as flour or eggs separate from ready to eat foods because flour is a powder and it can spread easily follow label directions to refrigerate um, products containing raw dough eat um sorry eggs until they are cooked 
uh, has to be um, properly handled, cleaned up thoroughly after handling flour, eggs, or raw dough. And so there goes um, eating raw dough, even if it has no egg in it. Because before, I remember uh, probably a year, two years ago, I was covering this similar idea because there was an outbreak. And the outbreak was um, the problem again with eating raw cookie dough with eggs in it and it causes salmonella problem i think it was the i don't think i think it was a blue bell i couldn't remember which one it was but um so i remember then saying okay yeah because in in one's thinking you you primarily focus on the 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 direct contact so directly eating meat directly eating eggs directly drinking milk and then you have a primary contact for salmonella e coli uh, two of the main problems um but here um i guess as the water sprayed and the the vats or the the, the containers that the wheat berries is stored in the trucks that is um processed in the fields that are filled with manure that the wheat grows in um as i say all these different ways that the e coli can get on the wheat and it would survive. That's what was just fascinating. I think after all that um, har drying and har you know harvesting, drying, storage, that the uh, E. coli would be free from the wheat. But somehow it seemed like it it stays viable. And until you cook that wheat, um, it is still viable. So hence, heat treating stuff makes sense for your health. And even the flour is sickening people. So, um, sixty something is said. Sixty-three people were sickened in two thousand sixteen just from E. coli contaminated flour. So, again, with my topic here, ongoing problems with animal-borne disease. When the animal feces get in the water and is sprayed on the crops, it is contaminating the crops. So this is why it's important, as I I say, um, to sterilize stuff, to wash stuff, um, to cook it, bake it. Eating raw stuff can be such of a problem. I say if you're going to eat um, anything, if you're going to cook, even if I'm going to cook, uh, definitely so. I, I couldn't imagine cooking like collard greens and not washing it. And when I say wash it, I mean rinse it. I mean wash it with soap. So I always just wash that stuff with soap, with uh, natural soap. Uh, if you use a natural, um, what do you call it, like glycerin, not glycerin based, but any, you know what I'm talking about, the natural soap from probably a soy base or something uh, to get off everything off of it all matter off it and then cook it and then you find that you probably eliminate to a higher percentage there's never a foolproof way of doing anything because everything comes with some type of risk but you reduce your risk greatly by um, washing stuff if I do lettuce or anything like that I always wash the lettuce never eat it out of the bag you take it and you get in the water and soap it and wash it and clean it thoroughly and that means you know that you've reduced by a high percentage the possibility of any soil or bacteria on the surface it's just reducing the amount to get it to a manageable level that probably the acids in your stomach and your immune system can handle it if it gets in but you don't want to get a clump of feces or manure in your food so very important, you know, and it's nice to buy like organic stuff that you can see the, sometimes you open up a bag of organic lettuce and you can see the um, the insects alive still in it. So you know that it's not filled with chemicals that will kill that insect. Um, but then you still have to wash it and make sure that the soil, because some farmers use composting. Um, most farmers, I think they'll use manure because it's a cheap way to replenish the soil. Uh, so because of that, it's just, even when you have greenhouse, many times they will still use manure. And I've heard even some places like Mexico will use human feces, which is going to give you a higher chance of getting um, E. coli and other diseases, foodborne diseases on the product. So very important, um, soap and water uh, is just going to reduce the chances. Not necessarily eliminate it because, you know, it, especially lettuce, he has low ridges in there and pockets and so but when we deal with animals we're talking about a lot of foodborne diseases a lot of diseases and so 
eating anything that is even um, nourished with its waste is a problem, much less eating the animal. So that will take me down to my third article here. And this now we're looking at um, it, the, the NBC News again, Maggie Fox, um, as she's reporting here, study explains how red meat raises heart disease risk. So red meat raises heart disease disease and also affects kidney function researchers have been uh, sorry researchers have more evidence about how eating red meat can raise heart disease risk two studies published monday show that people who eat red meat but not vegetarians or people who eat only white meat uh, such as chicken produce more of a chemical called TMAO, which has been shown to raise heart risk, heart disease risk. And they, and they stopped making so much of the compound a month after they stopped eating red meat. So even after they stop, the compound is still in their system. They also showed that a diet heavy in red meat can change kidney function. A surprise finding that raised more questions about red meat's effect on the body. These studies really show what a large impact a diet that is rich in red meat can have on your metabolism, says Dr. Stanley Hazen of the Cleveland Clinic, who has been studying the effects of TMAO on heart disease one of our most surprising finding was that a diet rich in red meat actually changed kidney function we saw that the kidneys were being regulated by a by a chronic diet this is something that as far as i'm aware hasn't been shown before tma tmao um short for trimethylamine and oxide is made by gut bacteria as they digest food. Red meat, especially, cause these gut germs to uh, germs to make a lot of TMAO. Uh, certain species of bacteria produce TMAO when they metabolize choline, lecithin, and carnitin, all of which are abundant in red meat, full uh, fat dairy products, and eggs. So I'll just repeat that again, it's just for your brain to hold that. So the choline, lecithin, and carnitin um, is, I guess, a derivative or byproduct when bacteria pr um, break down um, meat and um, it produces these TMA TMAO, and all of which is abundant in red meat, full fat dairy products, and eggs so if you have a cook milk and he has that skin at the top and all that stuff or you can make cheese with it you will end up with a lot of tmao and including eggs hazen's team has shown uh, as a matter of fact i say this and i remember one of the first things they said about um president 41 um bush um 41 number 41 that one of the things he had, the first thing I think in the morning when he woke up that day before he died was two or three eggs. So you can imagine his body produced a lot of TMAO before he passed away. So this is the type of stuff we're talking about here. And I thought you shouldn't be able to eat more than two or three eggs a week. Because more than that is too much for one week. Imagine you're doing that in one meal. Azen's team has shown that people who have more TMAO in their blood also have a higher risk of heart disease. And people with higher TMAO levels also have a higher risk of dying early. So that's important. It will increase your chance of dying young. Vegetarians and vegans have lower levels of TMAO unless they take certain supplements and usually also have a lower risk of heart disease than meat eaters. One study piggybacked on the federally funded study of diet and showed people people's TMO levels 
went up significantly when they were fed a controlled diet rich in 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 red meat some people have a tenfold rise in tmo levels after a month of eating red meat hayes and teams report in the european um heart journal so that's let's just remember a tenfold increase uh, that didn't happen in people fed poultry or and fish or vegetarian diets and other non-meat source of saturated fat didn't affect tmao interestingly this continuation of diet um, of dietary red meat reduced plasma tmo within four weeks the team wrote they did not test intake of dairy products or eggs in the study but other work other work has shown that eating eggs and dairy can raise tmao levels also so remember um eggs and dairy is just liquid meat it's like you emulsify meat and then water it down so this is why other studies i believe will show this because if you understand somebody say oh, I, do, I don't eat meat i eat eggs you eat you eat in liquid meat i take dairy you just eat in liquid meat that's all <laughs> in a second study is and team showed gut bacteria converted an amino acid called carnitine into tmao when they gave um, carnitine supplement to meat eaters, their gut bacteria quickly started making TMO, TMAO. At first, the bodies of vegetarians and vegans did not produce much TMAO even when they took um, supplements. But after a few weeks, they did. His and team reported in a journal of clinical investigation. So then, carnitine... Um, and I guess if you probably start taking out just a whole bunch of lecithin and stuff like that, it would take a while, but it would start building up and start becoming toxic to your system. Omnivore general generates significant more TMAO than vegans and vegetarians from oral carn carnitine. They wrote, other studies have shown that TMAO may make blood more likely to clot, which would help explain why it raises the risk of heart attacks and stroke but hazen um said it's um it's clear that red meat perhaps because of tmao has other bad effects on health red meat raised the risk um not only of heart disease but of colorectal cancer he said hazen is working on a drug that would lower tmo levels he hoped his works might lead to a pill that would lower the risk of heart disease, right? So he wants to come up with a pill for your ill. Um, these findings reinforce these findings reinforce current dietary recommendation that encourage all ages to follow a heart healthy eating plan that limits red meat says charlotte pratt of the national heart and lung and blood institute uh, which helped fund the work this means eating a variety of food including more vegetables fruits whole grains low-fat dairy foods and plant-based proteins such as beans and peas hazen himself has changed his diet since he started studying tmao i have to admit i used to be a really big red meat eater he said now he doesn't eat much at all he also counsels his patients to watch not only the food they eat but the supplements they take few studies show effect of taking supplements long term he said choline carnitine lecithin supplements have the potential to affect the heart risk and kidney function he said people should try to get the nutrients they need in their diets i tell them to try and get it from a real food from fruits from vegetables and from real food real foods hazen said end of article so very um important article here notice here he says uh going back over this thing now choline choline sorry um supplements of will be the effect has been shown to affect the kidney 
because I've taken choline and things are messing with my head. Uh, you know, I've tried a lot of this type of supplements over the years. And over and over again, I find very few doesn't affect me negatively. But uh, normally, foods, as he says, herbs, just the natural plant, is just finding the ones that will help you. You know, I always believe that there's something specifically, two or three or four or five or six or ten of them out there that will help you. Specifically, it's just knowing which one will help you for whatever you need. But there's something in God's world, wild world that can help you. Just it's just finding that one. But anyhow, so the lecithin and so forth. Uh, even I believe if it's from soy, won't have to watch that stuff. Uh, if your body, I guess, is so in need of it, it probably won't affect you as a person who's just taking it for taking its sake. So going over this year, as I say, my 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 focal point, what I'm talking about here, is ongoing problems with animal-born diseases. Now, notice it says red meat meat raises risk not only of heart disease but of colorectal cancer, and that's insignificant because there's a, and I think I mentioned it here, I mentioned it somewhere, uh, where probably two weeks back there was a young lady that is, I think her name is Terej Ter or something. She's a uh, famous actress on some sitcom on TV that has to do with rap. And she, I saw a headline last week where she's, um, she had to come off meat because the doctor says she is in risk of having colon cancer or colorectal cancer, one of them. And so she switched to a vegan vegetarian diet to avoid this um, uh, scourge. So it's important to understand that the, the, the food itself, uh, that is animal based, whether it be contaminated or plants, or the animal itself is being eaten and is contaminating our bodies, one has to know that the risk of disease drop precipitously when you're off a uh, animal based diet, you're off animals, and even just avoiding having animals not getting close to your food itself reduce your risk of getting sick just that's just how contaminated um animals are that just if you if you don't get the animal feces near foods you don't worry about contamination and if you don't eat the animal forget about it you you reduce your risk i'm gonna read this other statement here in the article uh it said here some people had a tenfold rise in tmao Levels after a month of eating red meat, Hayes and team reported in the European um, Heart Journal. So, just eating, oh, yeah, thanks for that. It's, her name is Taraji Henson. So, if you want to look it up, you can see her. She's, she's, um, I've seen her picture all over the place. Um, so, and when I saw the article, I said, Yeah, I know her. And so she had to pull out. I don't know her, but I've seen her around. <laughs> and she had to pu pull away from eating meat to avoid getting sicker. Oh, and that's what it is when I read the article. They said um, that she already stopped feeling pain because she went to the doctor feeling pain in her, I think, in her in her stomach and her, her, her colons or her anus. I don't know where. But she was feeling pain down there somewhere. And she stopped eating the meat and the pain went away, went away. Now, that's significant because notice here what I just read. That a person after one month of eating red meat increased their TMO. TMAO. This is this substance that increases the risk of heart problem and affect the kidney. Just one month. And one month after stop eating meat, the TMO, TMAO levels drop. So, so, so just imagine you could be a vegan, healthy, you know, taking herbs, juicing, exercising, eating your beans. And within four weeks of going on a red meat diet, your levels of TMO, TMAO has increased tenfold. And you start affecting in a negative way and a measurable way your heart and your kidney. Because, you know, the kidney is always going to be affected because the kidney has to process protein uh, and take what is not needed by the body and break it down and throw it out as uric acid. So just imagine 
this is tenfold in four weeks. Four weeks is nothing. Just think about you listen to me today, and in four weeks, if we, our life lasts, if we live to see four weeks, we in a new year and a new month. It goes by so fast, and you 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 could tenfold increase your chance of basically grabbing your chest and dropping to the floor. And just imagine now doing that month in, month out. There's some people hardly cook because they're just always having something on the grill, some red meat that need to be hit with some heavy heat and smoke. So tenfold rise. So just keep that in mind, right? The, the tenfold here, ten times the level. Now I'm going to read this quotation. You've probably heard it before from Ellen G. White, written about 130 years ago. 120 years ago or so. And this is taken from the book, Second Testimony, Second Volume of the Testimony, page 63, paragraph 3. Notice she says here, a hundred and some years ago, this is fascinating, before any study on TMAO, the liability, the liability to take disease is increased tenfold by meat eating. I'm going to read the rest of it, but I just want that to sink in. I don't want to read it a second time so it can sink in. <laughs> the liability to increase diseases tenfold. These doctors here with the latest technology have said within four weeks, this negative chemical in your body increased tenfold or being produced by gut bacteria increased tenfold. Within four weeks, just by eating red meat. So we go back again to the reading. Second Testimonies, page 63. The liability to take disease is increased. The liability to take disease is increased tenfold by meat eating. The intellectual, the moral, the physical powers are depreciated by the habitual use of flesh meat. Meat eating deranged the system, beclouds the intellect and blunt and blunts the moral sensibility. The person doesn't have good moral judgment just by eating meat. Meat is like smoking weed and worse. Or or tobacco. It is unreal. Tenfold so somebody say, I want, you know, I, I want to not have, can you know, how to reduce my risk of having cancer. I'm going to tell you how to drop it 10 times. Just avoid eating meat. You avoid eating meat, you're not just going to affect your colon, your stomach, your rectum, your brain, your heart. Your heart is going to be 10 times less likely to come down with a heart attack. Your kidney, your liver. Now, somebody might say, "Well, but can't a person be a vegetarian and die of um, disease?" Yeah, but it's just you're reducing it ten times. You know, it's it's if you're gonna die at twenty, you probably live to see forty. That's all. And you 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 know, uh, there's a saying, and I'm not gonna get it. I don't gonna get it right because I, I've heard it many a time. So the exact way it's said, but you can find it if you look for it. But it's this the concept. I'm going to explain the concept of the state, the saying. You know, the the, the 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 saying, the saying, the concept of it is something along the lines that it would be better to die of a a, a larger age, but younger. In other words, you physic when you die, you're not physically dying, and your body just fall apart. This is a basic idea. One day you will hear it, you say, oh, that's what he was talking about. Because I've heard it, I've learned it once. And it was somebody saying something in passing, and then I was thinking about it and say, yeah, that's so true. Because you could you could live to be 100, but you're 100 all curled up in a ball. You know, and you're just, you have to almost be fed by a tube. But you're 100, okay, it's so great. But it would be better probably to live to be 70, and, you know, you you gave out or you fell asleep one night and didn't wake up. But the day before, you went for a jog, you know. Or you lived to be 100 and as a matter of fact, the life came to an end. But the day before, you went for a hike 
and you came back home went to sleep and you just had a sweet sleep and kept on sleeping that would be better and so sometimes that's what we're talking about it's not just living it's the quality of life you know we we're not promise eternal life here and now but if i'm gonna live to see 50 i prefer to live to see 50 and i'm in the hell that i'm in currently or even better and then i just peg out then i see 50 years of brutality because i'm just always vomiting and diary and this cancer and that cancer and that's what it's about people say oh but it's not about whatever it's about you know we have one life to live yeah but who want to live one life in pain and suffering and cloudiness of mind and you know turbulence experience where like there's a tornado or a hurricane going on inside of my body please give me peace by god's grace so and, you know you want to reduce this by tenfold so that's one more thing that he said there that's important so what we're talking about here again um it's it's the more meat is the more certain bad bacteria is um it's gonna to have to break down that meat and as they're breaking it down they're producing all these dangerous chemicals that are poisoning our system and they're probably there in small dosage for good reasons um because everything produces waste so to speak but it is this overabundance of it that creates these problems in our system poison our system and make our system so toxic that next thing you know, you start developing cancers or heart problem. And this is in red meat. I'm going to read it again. It says, um, the breaking down of metabolizing, where you metabolize choline, even in, fascinating enough, in um, supplement form, lecithin, carnitine, or carnitine, it, which they're abundant in red meat, full fat dairy and eggs you look at a person that's a vegan vegetarian eat a wholesome spectrum of food beans and all that stuff and you look at a person who is a meat eater and their system is falling apart and you look at them you're like what's going on or you've been on both sides as i always say to people when i talk you have to always remember i used to be on both sides um of the debate i used to be a heavy meat egg cheese eater and junk food period cakes and stuff like that and chocolate and so when i'm talking sometimes i kind of i always forget to tell the person that i used to be on that side of the aisle and then i left from that side of the island and i go to the other side of the island and i'm over here now with coconuts and carrots and stuff like that and so experience both as that statement i just read is not just avoiding colorectal cancer um high blood pressure stroke heart problem stomach problem you know vomiting and diarrhea it's also the good health and the better feeling better feeling in the body better feeling in the mind a clearer mind um that's what it is. I know when I don't know about you, but when you're tired, right? And I'm gonna get back to what I want to talk about, but I just want to talk to you personally here. When you're tired and you feel mentally clogged up and you feel exhausted in your body, you feel like you just want to sleep. Because you know, there's one thing when your brain is tired, there's another thing when your body's tired, and it's a total another thing when you both your brain and your body's tired. And to go through life like that every day is not a good thing. So when you have experienced one way and you experience another way. It's hard to explain to a person that you 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 if you switch um, ex exactly what's going on because I can say to you that it's just it's just superb it's just way better, um, but the person might feel like they're gonna miss something and they might switch and miss something because I remember talking to a guy I knew um, and he said he had switched to become a vegetarian but he never knew about the protein part. So he was eating, but no like beans, no nothing like that. And he said he was like wasting away. And I was like, wow. And he said he just switch back to meat because he didn't know what to do. But if you have a wholesome diet and, you know, you have some black beans, red kidney beans, lentils, some, um, 
whatever beans, and you're eating that, and you're eating, you know, some tofu, and if you can't take gluten, you eat that. If you can't, just avoid it altogether. And you, you're eating a balanced diet with your, you know, ground produce, like sweet potatoes, diverse different type of sweet potato from America and China and all these places, and Irish potato, and you eat all that stuff. I'm going to tell you something. The way you feel, it's, it's just... It's not, you know, it's just a good feeling. And that, that's, that's where you want to be. And so a person could be like, and, and remember, you're not going to feel that way immediately. Because when you're eating meat, you're getting the hormones from the, the animal. And you're getting the fake hormones that is being pumped into the animal to make the animal grow faster. So when you stop eating that, you, you could even get sick. Because your body is going to miss all that hormone. And so this that could what could trip a person up. And then if you don't know what to cook, then it could trip you up also. Because then, you know, you know, you start to not get in the, the good food and the variety of food. So your body could start going to some serious deficiency. And some of that deficiency is just the m missing the hormone and the protein and the secondary food. Because you're eating all that secondary food. But I'm going to tell you, if the moment you figure that part out and uh, you start eating and, you know, like you start learning to make beans, pinto beans and all that beans become your friend and you're eating a variety of fruits and vegetables, you start learning to do that, man, it's a different experience. And you're going to find apples to apples because you can't compare yourself to, say, somebody else. You have to compare your, your pre-meat and your post-meat diet. Where you get rid of liquid meat, whether it be um, eggs or milk and all dairy products, including cheese. Because there's people who don't understand that cheese is more dangerous than meat. It, it, it is, just think about cheese. It's basically you take liquid meat, which is milk. You concentrate it down. And then you spoil it. That, that, that's fast. It's just a block of rock solid, you can use it and, and burst somebody, hit somebody in the head and cause them to bleed. Um, meat. And then you concentrate it, and you eat that, and that just, especially for black people, because nobody black, well, 85% they say of black people cannot digest or break down in their stomach um, milk protein, casein. So you are somebody who's, uh, say black American and uh, black people in Africa don't eat milk so the body doesn't recognize it and they try to eat that thing and that thing is causing all kind of mental fog number one to me because I hate that mental fog stomach problems allergy problems asthma problems inner ear infection sinus infection all that mess and I used to eat that thing all the time and that thing messed me up so full fat dairy, eggs will not only mess up your lungs, mess up your heart, it just mess up your kidney, it mess up everything. You get that stuff out of your body, it'll take a few months, but but the moment you, you land on your two feet and you start eating a variety of healthy food, you will feel so much better. And if you can get your beans game down, eating some beans, and you can get your Fruits and vegetable game, game down. And you you nail that thing down. I'm going to tell you, it, you can't compare. And especially if you start doing herbs, you know, like in a daily basis, a tablespoon, two tablespoon of herbs a day, you will feel nice. It's just no ways to say. You just feel good. You, you, I wouldn't say you feel good. You physically feel good. You mentally feel good. I'm not saying you feel good for somebody to feel you. I'm saying you feel good to you, you know, so, so just, even just closing your hand, you feel good. Just moving your hand, moving your body, your brain feel good, feel clean as ever. Uh, hard to explain um, to a person. You just have to do it and then you say, oh, that's what he's talking about. You feel, you feel good and look good. And that's just the reality. And so um, I'll read a statement here before we close is that disease and cattle is making meat eating a dangerous matter this again is written over 100 years ago imagine where we are now with all these franken foods that we have 
uh, the Lord cause um, the Lord's curse is upon the earth and upon men and upon beasts and upon fish and as transgression become almost universal the curse will be permitted to become as broad and as deep as the transgression everywhere we go sorry I'm this is me not talking here everywhere we go the wickedness is getting worse and as the wickedness get worse we're told that the the beat down on the animals are going to get more disease and i think we're literally watching that happen that the animals are it's just you can't even use their feces to grow plants anymore it's just it's just dangerous everything is dangerous from the animal keep reading here from the statement from and this is um pur um november 7 1901 and it says here yeah, diseases contracted by the use of meat the diseased flesh of these dead carcasses is sold in the marketplace and disease among men is the sure result. The Lord would bring his people into a position where they will not touch or taste the flesh of dead animals. And I would add here now, not even use their feces to fertilize crops. The Lord would bring his people into a position where they will not touch or taste the flesh of dead animals. There is no safety in eating of the flesh of dead animals. And in a short time, milk of cows will also be excluded from the diet of God's commandment keeping people. In a short time, it will not be safe to use anything that comes from the animal creation. Man, applaud her. I applaud her. That is inspiration. Praise the Lord. Look, you can't even use anything. That means not even the feces of the animal can be used. Look, and when she wrote this again, 1901, she says a short time. We know 100 years, something years into the future. And she was saying nothing that comes from an animal. And as I say, I throw in there, she didn't use manure. I think she was thinking manure probably. I don't know. But... She was saying you can't use the animal um, anything. You can't use the animal meat to eat. You can't drink the milk. You can't make butter from it. You can't make cheese from it. It is dangerous. And I would say here, we constantly see outbreaks with lettuce and collard greens and kale and all these things and tomato and avocado. Uh, what are they linked to? Uh, almost uh, no. What am I talking about? A hundred percent of the time, when I've read, they're linked to the feces, the manure from the animal. When it gets into the water, when it's sprayed on the plants, it contaminated plants and it's basically sickening and killing people. Nothing from the animal. You do that, you're you're just reduce your liability of getting sick tenfold. And I would say now it's worse. It's probably more like twentyfold. Nothing. I'll read it again. In a short time, it will not be safe to use anything that comes from the animal creation. Anything. Nothing. And as I said, you look at the outbreaks. You watch this year before we end the year. I don't know if any more is going to happen, but straight into next year, you watch. It's just going to get worse and worse because the animal. You look at the animal. They look so mangy and sick. Why are you going to eat them? So it's important. Not just to eat it, but not to even touch the carcasses. You see, nowadays when they try to dispose of certain things, oh, they have to tie back up and suit up and glove up and put on respirators and all these things. And if they have to handle an animal like that, why are you eating it? Why would I eat it? I'm glad I don't eat it anymore. I encourage you for your safety to stop eating animals, but even more so for your health now, you need to eat some as I say, some green leafy vegetables, some beans, some rice, very different grains. You need to start eating a healthier diet. It'll make you feel amazing. You eliminate the evil and then you add good. You 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 first have to detox or cleanse and then you nourish. That's always a principle in spiritual life and always a principle in natural life. You cleanse and nourish. You cleanse your diet from all that pus and blood and all that junk and cancer causing tumor causing things and then you add good nutrients and your body will thank you you know you just feel better apples for apples you compare yourself before and after not compare yourself to somebody else because they say you have to still deal with some of your genetical problems and stuff like that so you can't you're not going to get rid of everything but you're going to feel great 
God bless you on your trek. Let's pray. Thank you, O Lord, for your blessings in our lives. And I pray that you may be with us as we go through not just the rest of this day, but our lives, that we might make the choices, dear Lord, to take care of our bodies and to get the good feeling that you would want us to get from day to day. Be with us, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Thanks for being with me here on Revive Reform Radio. Looking forward to talking to you again tomorrow morning live when we should talk about current events. Until then, I pray that you may continue to walk with the King. Mm -hmm.